Good evening, my friends. You're very welcome along to tonight's Late Night Agenda. Or maybe I have to revisit the name of these, the Late Night Agendas, because I'm recording this at 7 o'clock, so there's nothing really late night about it. But we are where we are for the minute. So look, my friends, there's a lot to get through tonight. I've got an update on Manuel Ugarte for you, an update on Alexis McAllister, an update on potential investment in the summer, and a few other bits and pieces as well. You know the drill. We've gone through the newspapers, the media, and tried to find the most credible stories to bring to you surrounding Liverpool Football Club. Up. we want to know your thoughts in the comment section of course do drop a like on the video and if you haven't hit that subscribe button what the hell are you waiting for i mean how long is it going to take do you know what i mean click done we win no i'm only messing look seriously let's get to the stories so manuel Ugarte. It looks like the news coming out of Portugal is very good in Liverpool's race for the Sporting Lisbon and Uruguayan International. So Record, who are a Portuguese outlet, have said Liverpool are now front runners for the signature of Manuel Ugarte, having watched the player intensely in the last few matches, with a bid expected to arrive from Liverpool this week with the agent of Manuel Ugarte. Now look, what do we know about his clause? Well, we know there's a 60 million euro release clause in his Sporting Lisbon contract. What we don't know is how Liverpool will approach this will Liverpool look to maybe pay the amount but structure it differently will they blow us all out of the water and go in and actually just pay the release clause in one lump sum I doubt it and the investment part of this conversation will probably lead you to the reasoning or lead you to get my reasoning behind why I don't think we will pay it in one lump sum so I guess what we're hoping for here is Liverpool to go in and negotiate with Sporting Lisbon maybe keep it at 60 million euro if that's the price but I think it is complicated a little bit from my understanding is I think 20% of his commercial rights are owned by a third party and obviously third party ownership is banned in the Premier League so that would have to be resolved um, working off memory here I think we We've resolved previous situations um, or situations previously around players like that. So I don't think that's going to be a deal breaker, but it's looking positive, right? Because we had been a little bit worried when we seen this stuff coming out a few weeks ago. I think it was from Neil Jones that said Liverpool are focusing their uh, recruitment search around the Premier League. Now, didn't rule out the possibility of maybe Liverpool looking towards Europe, South America or elsewhere, but it certainly had a scratch on our heads going, well, who's going to be the DM? Who's going to be the player we bring in to maybe compete with Fabinho, maybe replace Fabinho, but certainly to come in there and, and give us some younger legs. We hoped it was Ugarte, and these reports coming out of Portugal are certainly positive ones. So, again, we want to know what you think about it. Do you think €60 million Euro is a fair price uh, for somebody who is 22 years of age, already fairly established Uruguayan international, and, of course, done decently with Sporting Lisbon? I know he's caught the eye of many of the Liverpool fans because I'm constantly being asked about it. And I'm a bit late to the party on this one, but I'm sold. So Manuel Agarte, Alexis McAllister and Nicolo Barella would be a very, very, very good transfer window, in my humble opinion. But there is, of course, still a long way to go. So we move on to the next story now, and it is around investments. Now, a little bit concerned by what I read here. So I was flicking through the echo earlier on. A story caught my eye about Redbird Capital. But inside that story, there was a little bit of information that kind of left me scratching my head a bit. So let me read it out to you. Uh, the echoes say that Redbird will not participate in the investment search that FSG are currently conducting, which is expected to move to an advanced stage during the summer after potential investment partners were identified through an initial search led by Mike Gordon and facilitated by US banks Morgan Stanley and Goldman Sachs. Now, my concern with this is the summer is a bit late for us, right? If they're going to really get down to the nitty gritty of this over the summer, that's a bit late for investment to come in for Jurgen to be able to spend money in the transfer window. So, you know, call me a cynical old fool, but I believe that, um, I believe this could frustrate us a little bit in the window. I hope I'm very wrong. I hope FSG already have this access to this bundle of money that they're going to give Jurgen to spend in the summer. But when I read stuff like that, it kind of feels like another way to let a transfer window go by a little bit without fully having to, you know, spend money. But we'll wait and see. I do believe we will act in the market. I just don't know how much and with how much freedom. So again, wait and see. Now, Arlie and Shuameni, anyone? Yes, a little bit of an update from 90 men who say Liverpool would be interested in signing the Real Madrid midfielder if he was available, even if it was on loan, which is very interesting to me. The Reds wanted to sign the Frenchman in the summer, they go on to say, but... Madrid pipped us too, as we know. And we've seen varied reports coming out of Madrid. We've seen some reports that say this is all absolute nonsense. We've got no uh, intention of selling him. We're very happy. We'll give him time, yada, yada. But 
just like I told you guys many times, Real Madrid will be turning their attention to Kylian Mbappe. And those stories are starting to come out now that even with the potential signing of Jude Bellingham, Kylian Mbappe is on their radar and they are trying to sort out the financial situation that if he shows them any indication he wants out of Paris that they're going to try and make and come to Madrid. Now, that could be with a bit of a, you know, crawling the ground, trying to say, I made a mistake last year. You know, I should have followed my heart, should have gone to Madrid, but yada, yada. So keep an eye on that one as well. And that could all link in to Shuameni. So if they are looking to get Mbappe in, if they have won the race for Bellingham, then maybe they do need to free up a bit of money and maybe Arlene Shuameni could be available. If he is available, I'd like to think that Jurgen Klopp would still be interested in the player, considering he was right up the top of his wish list. So again, we want to know your thoughts on this and the last story i have for you guys tonight to move on about is alexis McAllister. so if you're on social media you've probably seen a post that has been roughly translated with old google translate and there are a few mistakes in it but the gist of it is liverpool is advancing more and more for alexis McAllister. the proposal is already under analysis by the father and agent of the national team footballer and it is a contract until and this is where there's a mistake december 2028 the final decision will be made when he finishes competing with Brighton this season. Now, I think this is lost in translation because they say the winter of, and in, I believe, over in Argentina, roles reverse, winter, summer, summer, winter. So what's our winter? Is there summer, vice versa? And I think it's just a loss in translation. I think you mean the end of the 2028 season. So if you want to have a look at this yourself, the Twitter account you need to look for is at CL. M-E-R-L-O. So at C-L Merlo. Check it out for yourself. Let us know what you think. It's all leading us to believe one thing though. Alexis McAllister could well be coming to Liverpool Football Club. Perhaps even the new number 10. I'd personally rather him take the 8 and give the 10 to uh, to Cody Gakpo. That's my own personal preference. But it is an interesting development in the chase for Alexis McAllister. I would nearly said Alexis Sanchez there. Alexis McAllister. Um. Again, we're seeing fees mentioned of about 60 million quid, but with that uh, clause that isn't the clause that David Ornstein spoke about, there could be a bit of wiggle room here, and I would expect negotiations to ramp up over the coming weeks. Obviously, both Liverpool and Brighton still have a bit to play for this season. Brighton chasing European football, Liverpool pretty much established into the champ or the Europa League places, hoping that Newcastle or United have a wobble that could maybe let us creep into the Champions League places. And of course, there's a huge game coming up for us on Monday away at Leicester City, which is important to us because we need the points, but it's very, very important to Leicester who are, of course, fighting relegation. So that is where we are at, my friends, as I knock the microphone and bring this video to an end. Let me know your thoughts on everything that we spoke about today. The latest on Alexis McAllister. Would you be happy with Manuel Agarte as well? And your take on the possible investments dragging on into the summer let us know your thoughts on that as well are you with me in thinking this could be an excuse already for fsg or do you think that they've made allowances for this and the money will be there for Jurgen to spend that is it for me tonight my friends look forward to catching up with you all tomorrow again let me know your thoughts in the comments section have a good one talk to you soon Bye bye